All right, gang, you guys are going to have a special treat. I just got done bathing, so I'm butt naked. But I get to have a towel on, so sorry, y'all. I just wanted to show you, because there is a couple people that are like, what? what? When you're out there camping, what, or don't you get all stinky and nasty and what have you? No, I bathe daily. I still smell fresh, and I feel fucking good right now. For whatever reason, whenever I bathe in these creeks over here on the property... I just, I feel rejuvenated, almost like, woohoo! Now that shit was cold, and in order to sit in that, I was like, holy shit. But, um, yeah, I took my bath. This right here is where I did it. You can see where all that is kicked up in. So I just kind of sat in there and did my little bit of bathing, did my routine. And now here I go. I'm clean and refreshed. I might even take a nap, because this is actually a vacation. And I am going to do relaxation, but um, I do have some more trees to plant. So this is a multi-purpose creek. See this guy right here? These are chestnuts. I got 10 chestnuts from newfarmsupply.com. These are good looking chestnuts. They came out of the box like this. If you look at their root system, beautiful root systems. Um, right now I'm just soaking these in the creek let them get full of water the you can see here the sun is coming through just a little bit ideally you don't want your new trees out of the box fucking just blatantly sitting in the sun but having them exposed to some sunlight and starting to get them to open up especially while you're soaking their roots is an amazing thing you can do for your trees right out of the box before you plant them it's a little bit extra of a tip that um, you can do to help them stay alive but you see all these are starting to come to life say hey I'm ready to grow. You also have some chin chickapins. You can see these root structures are just as gorgeous. They're all sitting in here ready to go as well. And then also some gobbler oaks. Um, these don't sprawl out nearly as much, but they look like they're more, their root structure is more like a pecan where it has one tap root that's really large. Um, all of the pecans that um, I've seen have super huge tap roots. They're pain in the ass because you have to dig and dig and dig and dig and dig. They don't sprout outwards. That's how these gobbler oaks are. So I'm pretty impressed with the uh, new farm supply. It's good stuff. Uh, I got a um, instant orchard um, box from them. It was about 300 bucks. And I had uh, about 100 trees in that whole thing. These in here that you see i also got some apples and some uh, black locusts and some pawpaws and some um i got a, actually a bunch more but i ended up giving some of those away um probably gave about i'd say 15 20 trees away and then um still have these yet to plant all the other ones are a lot of those orange tapes that you see out there um any of the smaller ones anyways but um yeah got all that stuff planted it's good to go and um i'm probably gonna take a nap here after i took my bath it's feeling pretty refreshing i feel pretty good now go jump back in the hammock maybe the sun isn't like blaring right down on it so i can still keep it cool because about now is when the sun is beating through the canopy where i have my campgrounds <laughs> come on waffles i still have some work to do yet um as you can see here i've about got this all cleared out finally you can imagine this all in here was thick as f shit dude all this all these old vines some of them are new vines but a lot of them are old dead vines um it looked looked much like this cluster right here all this in here looked like that um all that in there looked like that there's just a fucking clusterfuck. But once I clear all this out, 
I'll probably take out that gum tree right there in the front, but that's a uh, holly bush, holly tree, if you will, on the other side of it. And I'll probably leave that be, at the very least, cut it right there across that branch. You can see where these branches got hit up with that uh, heat from the fire, but that tree's still plenty alive. It's gonna come back. Um, that would be a perfect spot for a tree house, even, in between those three trees. Maybe even, I have ambitions in driving through here, clearing all that out, because that's all small underbrush tree right there. And um, essentially building an overhang from these big trees to these over here on the other side of this big deal. And I'll just put some, um, some stairs, I guess up here so if i have some kind of level this out a bit and then put my you know my walkway my entrance way into here and then imagine this right here being a platform tall enough to where i can still drive the subaru up underneath here maybe even park directly underneath it if i need to and then have a platform to where i can not only you know throw tents in there camp out, have company over, do what have you. But also, I can officially call this my deer stand or my blind because I can have all this cleared out and I'm gonna see the deer feeder right there. All of my trees that the deer are probably otherwise gonna wanna come and molest, all of the trees over there, I'll be able to see to a certain degree on this platform. But all this in front of me will essentially be my deer stand. They'll want to come down here and come and get a drink. I am a sure fire bet that that is a place where I'm going to be able to set up and collect some deer meats, y'all. So, on the fun side of things, this right here has got a little bit of gullies where it's washing out. And what I want to do is fill that in with some big rock and then some sand over the top of that. Make that a little beach plot. What I'll do is throw, so I'm gonna have to clear all of the main underbrush stuff the best that I can out of there. Then I'm gonna put the big rock over all of that and fill in everywhere. That way the water can come washing through. And then what I'm gonna have to do is just line the outside of it. I'm gonna be very careful with this because I wanna keep things from growing in there and that just that spot, this little spot right here. I'm gonna put rock salt and I'm not gonna put it too close because I don't want all of that shit to wash down and essentially kill everything in there one year. I want it to slowly come through. So I'm gonna be very very genuous with the amount of salt that I put through there to help keep it from growing and then put the uh, sand on top of it and then hopefully no weeds and shit will grow into my beach and then I'll have a cool place to have a little zip line up here to go into this after I end up flooding it out. Yep, hold on y'all, I lost my towel. Daggummit. I needed my other hand so I can operate this here towel. I have zero issues running around but naked in the wilderness. I do it often, but I'm not allowed to do it on YouTube. <laughs> now, this is what the normal campsite looks like. I ended up making some breakfast this morning. I made a video for you guys to see on that. Um, got it just sitting up. This is already cleaned out. I took that to the pond and essentially when you get grime and nasty stuff in here, just take you a handful of sand, throw in there, and just rub the shit out of it. And then put it in the creek, rub the shit out of it. Take this pan after you're done cleaning, put it on the heat source and get all that water off of it. That way you have a nice clean pot and it doesn't leave it to rust, okay? 
Um, even all of my excess coals, what I did essentially was just tossed them in here um, in the chimney and it got them heat, uh, hot again. And I stuck the pot on top of there and it more or less took all the moisture off of that pot, dried it out like that. Um, once again, if you didn't watch that video, I like using these hardwood lump charcoals instead of the little um, uniform briquettes. Um, those are essentially burnt wood in a bag. And I like that because not only, you know, I can get that stuff out here, but I got to be selective. I can't just go and get a gum tree. I don't want that gum tree taste in my food, you know. So I like that because it's, it's easy, it's readily available. I get a big ass bag of that. And I'm probably not even going to use that through the week that I'm here. I'll just drop that off over there. Uh, my kinfolk's property and they'll finish it off. But I got it to where I can park the Subaru down in here. Waffles just jumps in here. He takes his nap in the evening times. I'm right there so he can still guard me and still have a nice, wonderful place to sleep. Now, cool setup I have with modern conveniences, modern technology. That light up there, that's the BioLite uh, base lantern. And I can operate that with my phone. Speaking of which, I need to go ahead and charge my phone, which, by the way, I have right up here over my hammock, my sleeping quarters. I'm down to 31%. Now, what I can do, being I've got all the rest of the day to charge my phone. So, this is my GoPro setup. I've got all my cords, all my goodies in there. But, where did that thing go? I've got a mini solar panel, here we go, that runs along with that uh, base lantern. Alright, so what we got going on here, I'm going to put this up and I'm going to plug this in. What you see, Waffles? Why are you, why are you growling? Hmm? Oh. All right. So I got my phone charged up. This guy right here, gotta plug it into the USB port. See, like so. Now what I'm gonna do is place my phone underneath these solar panels. Now these solar panels I have linked up over there to my lights and to my battery and what have you for being out here but so on this it's got a sundial and being the sun is directly over us I gotta flatten this out but the little dot needs to ideally be right in the center of the sundial which is about right there and what that'll do is go ahead and charge my phone on up, get that back up to 100%. Man, while that's doing that, I'm gonna take a nap. Made uh, another video of me wandering around in the woods with a damn towel on after taking a bath, but you guys got to enjoy some of that action. <laughs> after I get up, I'll probably go ahead and uh, plant maybe a few of those trees over there in the creek and then these bushes here. I got the uh, Ankin bush cherry, Nan Nanking bush cherries and the Saskatoon, it says Sask uh, Saskatoon blueberry but it's a service berry. There's no Saskatoon blueberry. These are called service berries. They're wild in North America. They're they look very similar to a blueberry, so I see why they did that, but um, they were incorrect. It's not a blueberry. I need to put that a little bit deeper in there. And I have a few more of these black locusts that I have left to do. So that same stuff that I was showing you with the um, chestnuts and what have you, these are the black locust trees that I got. You know, you see, they are serviceable. They're a little small, but um, black locusts is 
are worth having. They're evasive, but you know, when you have a plant that is, is beneficial, then having like, like fucking asparagus. These guys right here, these asparagus are evasive. These asparagus will fucking take over all this shit if, if I let them. I like asparagus. I don't have any problems with them doing so. Um, Jerusalem artichokes, they will take over all that shit if I let them. I like Jerusalem artichokes. They fucking have at it. They grow as many of them as you want. These are comfrey, okay? Um, Russian comfrey. Uh, I forget. Russian burgundy comfrey. Red, red Russian comfrey. I forget what the hell they are. They're Russian something comfreys. And what I did was ordered some of those from Etsy, by the way. And they were little rhizome clippings. Now I put them in that bucket in order to get them excited and get them to start to grow. And what I'm going to do is place about one every 10 foot radius around my main um, under canopy trees. What that's going to do is going to be a natural fertilizer as it grows. I'm going to go in and clip some of it and I bet the deer are going to come in and fuck that shit up too. So the thing with the deer, they're going to rather eat that comfrey than any of these trees that are above them. Oddly enough, they really love that comfrey. And that's cool because their shit is going to be some of the best fertilizer around wherever it lays. And they're going to also have seeds in them from, you know, all over the place. There's going to be, they're going to be essentially nature's way of spreading this food force throughout the fucking property. All throughout the woods, all throughout everywhere else nearby. And that's cool with me. So that comfrey is going to one be a uh, a fertilizer for anywhere I plant it. It's also going to be a good ground cover. It's also going to be a good deterrent um, and fill for deer to keep them away from my fruit trees that I otherwise wouldn't mind having a few fruits off of every year. Um, Comfrey is also good for skin. Skin stuff, like putting it in homemade soaps, any kind of homemade lotions. Um, if you take like some olive oil or coconut oil, and you, you don't even need to heat it up, just stick it out in the sun, like get it melted down. Take some ground up comfrey after you dry it out and put it in there um, with some like uh, tea tree oil, some peppermint oil, maybe some eucalyptus oil and some like jasmine oil, something on those lines even. And take that stuff, you rub it along your skin. If you've got some um, some uh, some bad shit going on with it, some what is that, the emphysema, not emphysema, that's the breathing problem. Eczema, that's what I'm after, you fucking pricks. I know you guys were saying eczema, not emphysema. <laughs> Sorry, my brain doesn't work jeopardy speeds. There's too much going on in here. It's like, it's not Jeopardy speeds. I have to fucking go through the filing. And you know, I'm not a uh, OCD motherfucker, so I don't have everything filed away in perfect order in my filing cabinets up there. I have them sprawled all out, so sometimes it takes a minute for me to find everything. But there's a method to my madness. Always. I want to uh, go take my nap now, so you guys take care, and I'll come back with you guys and show you around the property a little bit more after I do something more exciting and fun, what have you. Peace out.